Okay, great. Just so we can make sure to have the session recorded. Okay, hopefully everyone can see me okay, hear me okay. For this session, so normally we actually do have our webinar chat closed and we only have the Q&A open. For this session, we're actually gonna have both open. So if you want to chat in the webinar chat, you should be able to. You can let us know where you're um, tuning in from. I'm here in Mexico City, it's the morning. Um, so you can see about using the webinar chat. And then you can also use the Q&A. So the Q&A will be for questions. If you have any questions during the session, you want to ask something, um, our panelist Claudia is here to help me um, and she can answer any of your questions. Okay, so we will go ahead and get started soon. We'll give people a few more minutes to, um, to join us. I see some people are already typing in the chat. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. I think this time zone works well in the US and Europe and Latin America as well. Not sure if anyone's joining us from other places. I know the time zone can be a bit strange sometimes in some parts of the world. Okay, and once again, if you have any questions during the webinar, you should see the Q&A. Um, you can type questions in the webinar chat, but they might get lost in, in everything. So if you really want your question shown um, and answered, type it in the Q&A so our panelists can actually see it, and then she'll, she'll go ahead and answer it. Um, or I might answer it as well. Um, but if you just want to kind of discuss things, I will be asking some questions where we can kind of discuss with each other. Um, so that's what the webinar chat is good for. Okay, we can go ahead and get started, I believe. Yep, yeah, we're just on time. Okay, so welcome everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and get started while everyone is still joining. Um, if any, if at any point you can't uh, see me, hear me, whatever, just, just let me know if there's any technical difficulties, but let's get started. We are talking about our 2025 email marketing roadmap. So it's the end of the year, everyone's going to be off on holidays soon. Um, so it's a good time to kind of reflect on this year, email marketing wise, and then also kind of have a rough idea of what we want to do next year. Again, all email marketing related. Um, so it's really gonna be just, we're gonna reflect on some of the trends that we saw this year, as well as your own individual performance. Um, I'll be asking some questions and we can do some reflections there. Um, and then we'll go into um, next year. So predictions for next year, what we're thinking is going to be on trend, what we want to look into, and then also um, your own personal goals for next year based on what happened this year. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. My name is Harmony. If you joined any of these sessions, you might've seen me before. I'm a customer education specialist here at MailerLite. So I help with our knowledge base articles, tutorials, um, and I do these webinars as well. I've been in the company for a few years. Um, so I'm just happy to share anything I can share knowledge-wise. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. And we have our panelist, Claudia, here as well. Um, and like I mentioned, if you weren't here when I mentioned it, questions put in the Q&A. So if you should see the Q&A, that way you'll be able to see, um, our panelists can see it right away, okay? Okay, so just to give an overview of what we'll be talking about, like I said, 2024 trends, recap, and key takeaways, jumping into next year, 2025. Crazy that it's already 2025, right? Trend predictions, and then also personal reflections. And then we'll jump into the goal setting workshop where we're gonna kind of, I'll be asking some questions where you can kind of reflect on your own performance. At this point, you can even go into your own account in MailerLite or kind of just where you're looking at your data. Um, and just so you can actually see what 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 did your performance look like? You know what I mean? So you're not just kind of guessing, um, but we'll we'll talk about that later on. Okay, so we're gonna start with the 2024 trends recap. Okay, so we're gonna look at what happened this year um, as far as just trends in the email marketing world, what we saw and how it's going to affect um, what happens next year. Okay, so we definitely saw the rise of AI, right? This year we saw a huge rise in AI, specifically for personalization at scale. Personalization has always been something that is important in email marketing. What we mean by that is um, using people's names, knowing their recent purchases, just any information about your subscriber, about um, the people that are um, reading your content, subscribing to your emails, purchasing products, anything like that, the data and information you have on them, AI kind of kicked that up a lot because before 
it was a lot more manual or we had to rely on importing data. Now we actually have AI to help us personalize a lot of things. And this will also definitely kick up again in the next coming year. Um, but we just saw AI all over the place. And especially in Mailer Light, we now have AI with smart sending to help you send your emails um, in a way where AI can actually predict the best send times. We have AI in the writing assistant. So when you're writing your emails, you can um, use the AI and actually, you know, and actually get um, ideas with the with the suggestions. But in general, we're just seeing AI in a lot of different places, whether using it in MailerLite or using it outside of MailerLite and using it in your marketing strategy. Um, AI is just going to be something that we see this year and also in the next coming year. One other trend is more accessible campaign testing. So we saw a lot more ability to test this year because essentially things are getting more competitive. Okay, so we need to see what works and also things change very quickly in the marketing world. So we wanna make sure that we're staying on trend but we don't always know what works, what changes, what our audience responds to. So A-B testing, multivariate testing is a great way to help with that. Um, and we saw a lot more of it this year. In the past, A-B testing and multivariate was seen as a more advanced strategy. And I believe it still is an, adv an advanced strategy, but I think as marketing and everything accelerates with AI and it all gets more competitive. So these advanced strategies are becoming more mainstream, more things that more people are using in everyday marketing, um, email marketing. Um, and it's just becoming easier as well. So these features are becoming easier to use, easier to navigate. Um, in MailerLite specifically, we have guides on all of this. We have tutorials on all of this. Um, so you can basically A-B testing is just to test different elements of your emails, right? So we're talking about sending emails with different subject lines, different content. Um, maybe it has different CTAs, different links. And based on the results, the open rates, the click rates, everything, you can see what performs better, what subject lines perform better, what um, content in general performs better. Even little tiny things can affect open rates, pre-headers, all of this. So this is something that will definitely help your engagement overall when you understand what your audience responds to um, and everyone is different every industry is going to be different so you might read best practices tips on what to do and it's great to follow them but at the end of the day you're going to want to check your own uh, audience and see what they respond to so this is something we saw a big jump this year Okay, we also saw new inbox regulations. If anyone remembers this. Mm. We did talk about it um, in MailerLite. We had a webinar on this. We also have some content on this as well. We have a blog article and we also have a checklist. Um, but I'll go over this briefly because this did happen earlier this year in February. Um, so basically, yes, Google and Yahoo had their new inbox regulations, which changed the game a lot, not only in the email marketing world, but in MailerLite and just the way that we see um, authentication and regulations in general. So what changed? You now, it's much more important to authenticate your sender domain, right? So if you don't already have an authenticated domain, you've probably been prompted to in MailerLite or you've seen um, something on it. I think Prior to this year, it was a bit, every, people knew that, yes, having your own domain was important, authenticating it was important, but it became a lot more important this year. And because it became more important, more people knew about it, it had to become easier. So in MailerLite, we've implemented easier ways to authenticate your domain. If you haven't already, it's quite simple. Um, you don't, we don't host domains, but you know there's lots of hosting platforms out there, and we do have lots of different um, guides on, um, we do have lots of different guides on different hosting providers. So you can see how to authenticate your domain, but that became a big thing this year to make sure that your domain was authenticated. Whereas in the past, it was more recommended. Again, maybe something that was seen more as advanced, um, but it was not mandatory. And now it has become mandatory in a lot of ways because if you send an email and it lands in a Yahoo inbox or a Gmail inbox, which 
most likely it will. Most people use uh, Yahoo and, and Gmail. So most likely you're sending emails that land in these inboxes. If it's not authenticated, it will not be shown. It will not, your deliverability will go down. It will not be seen. These inboxes are now prioritizing authenticated domains. Um, so that means no personal domains from, you know, at gmail.com. It's your own domain, all of that. Like I mentioned, we have guides. I won't go into the specifics of how to authenticate your domain, but yes, became very, very important this year. Um, and also spam rates. So they also implemented to stay below a certain spam rate threshold. Um, and that's also important as well. Basically, deliverability. This, this, these new regulations made deliverability become a lot more important. So now we understand how important it is to authenticate your domain, how important it is to keep below a certain spam rate, not just because it's best practice or because it's recommended, but because if you don't have it or you don't follow those, those um, regulations, your emails actually just won't be seen. So quite important this year. Okay, also growing accessibility awareness. So we saw this become a trend this year, again, because things are getting more competitive. So we have to find ways to make our content more accessible to more people, right? So we do have content on this, a blog on how to make your content accessible. And what does that mean exactly? So making content accessible just means that it can be read easily on mobile, desktop, the... Um, the links are easy to find, the instructions, the layout, it's all easy to see. It should just be visually appealing, but not so much design-wise, more accessibility-wise. So what does that mean? Avoid adding too much text or too many images. Um, you wanna have a good ratio, so a good standard ratio between text and images. You can also use alt text for your images. So in MailerLite, you can always add alt text for your images. And actually, inboxes do like this when you add your um, the alt text. So that is also something that is quite um, important for accessibility. Also, just following a structure. So making sure that you have headings, that your images make sense, that it's structured in a nice way, formatted in a nice way, so that your emails just look nice and are easy to read at a glance. I think in this world, we're kind of looking at things quickly. Our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. So the easier things are to look at, the better. I think someone might see a complicated looking email that isn't formatted right. The colors are off, the ratio is off, and it's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to even, you know, it just, it, it kind of, it is, it's annoying to look at. So it's really important these days when people's attention spans, they look at something and decide right away if they want to read it. And so it's good to make sure that design is something that you're thinking of, but not so much that you have to be a designer, just that you're thinking about formatting and how your email actually looks. Um, if you are, and this isn't just in emails, if you're using forms on your websites, make sure that you explain what the forms are for, what they're going, what you're going to, what you will receive when the form is submitted, um, what kind of data is going to be collected. Just make sure that everything is um, out there for people to see that it's easy to see, um, and that it's, um, easy for people to submit. There shouldn't be too many, um, clicks or too many things that they should do to be able to submit the form. Everything should be simple. And I don't believe there's anything else mainly to mention. Um, someone asked, what is alt text? We do have articles on this. Alt text is when it comes to your images. So every image that you add in a campaign, you can click on it and there will be an option to add alt text. And it's basically a description of what the image is. So with this, it would be um, girl on laptop. You know what I mean? Just something simple. It helps inboxes read your images so that for deliverability, but also helps with accessibility. If someone is using like a text to speech, for example, and they need something read out loud, um, it can help them understand what the image is. So we do have guides on this. I, I'm not an alt text expert, so we do have guides on what this is, but when it comes to accessibility and just making your campaigns more accessible to more people, uh, it is important. Okay, we have quite a lot of people in here. Okay. So let's look at the recap. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not talking too quickly or going too fast for anyone. Sometimes I do talk a little fast. So 
Apologies for that. I'll try and slow down. But let's look at the key takeaways from this year. And these are kind of the, the big ones, right? I mean, there was a lot of other things that we saw, but when we're looking at the, the overview, definitely AI as a growth driver, subject lines, um, segmenting specific content based on AI, um, and then best send time automation, like I said, with Moodlet, we now have the um, ability to send your emails based on what AI thinks is the most optimal time. So this is something that is going to grow. I think as technology grows, we see these like big leaps. And for me, I saw AI be like as this big leap. So it's just, it's constantly advancing, getting smarter. Um, it can seem intimidating and it can seem like I have to use AI. And it's, it's not like you, you have to use AI. It's just something to be aware of and understand how it can help you because it actually, there's so many ways that AI can um, help a, a company grow, um, especially in marketing. So it is something to look into if you're not already using AI to just kind of look into how maybe it can be useful for what you're, for what you're doing, um, because it really, it's in so many ways it can, it can help. Um, as I mentioned, regulation and domain ownership, authentication, um, spam rates, looking at unsubscribes, bounce rates, all of this became a lot more um, important this year. So again, whereas in the past it was more recommended, it was something that you should do or was something, oh, if you have a lot of subscribers, you should do it. Now it's just, if you are sending emails through an email marketing service, you know, you are doing email marketing, it doesn't matter if you have under a thousand subscribers or you're just starting out or what the situation is now, if you are in this, um, this industry, this email marketing world, um, authentication is, is important. And it's not as complicated as it, as it might seem. Um, it can be a little tricky, but like I said, because it is mandatory, we have made it easier. So that means we have, like I said, tutorials on all of the posting providers. We have guides on everything. We have our automatic authentication. So you don't have to add the, um, the records anymore. It depends what you're using, but yeah, we made it a lot easier. So we do have, we do have guides on all of that. Um, authentic engagement as well. So I'll talk about this as we go into 2025 trends, but this has become something I think, because I said, I mentioned our attention spans are getting shorter. Competition is growing. So things like accessibility, personalization, all of this becomes a lot more important, right? And authentic engagement is something that we talk about now kind of going into this new, I don't know, I guess this new era of communication of like influencers and reels and TikTok and like just more casual, authentic, that type of engagement. How that translates to the email marketing world is a little bit different, but it's just how we're communicating to our audience now. Um, it's changing. So we're not talking like, marketing like we're marketing to people we don't want to talk like we're selling right we don't want to talk like we're this business and we're trying to sell to this buyer it's really that I feel like that tone is is really losing interest and the people are turning away from that because it's growing in this world of um, authentic engagement personalized content accessibility um, all of that so we'll talk more about that as we go into um, 2025 looking ahead to next year so what are we predicting? So when we look at our predictions for 2025, um, these were gathered by our team. So we do put out every year, we do put out a blog for our predictions for next year. So I gathered different um, insights from different members of our team, from education, from our email marketing specialists to SEO, just different people in MailerLite in our team who had their own predictions for next year and, um, you know, just all of us kind of putting this all together based on what we've seen. So again, going back to AI, right? Powered automation and predictive analytics. What does it all mean? Um, smarter send times and content recommendations. All this is, is just saying that AI will be more integrated into our marketing, into our automations, into our analytics, how we automate how things are sent, when things should be sent, all of that. Not, not specifically saying this is happening in MailerLite, just in general, this is something that we can expect to see. And predictive analytics, so using AI to actually predict what is best. So like I mentioned, the, the smart sending, using AI to predict, okay, what is the best end time based on this subscriber's open rates? 
Um, and that's something that we as a human could not really sit there for hours and decide and do, you know, so it really is using AI to its fullest when to predict what is best um, in our marketing. Predictive segments, personalized journeys. So using AI to actually, again, create segments, predictive, what is what is the best target audience for this email, um, just using AI to kind of put all of that together. So relying on your own insights of your audience with AI, if that makes sense. So using AI to enhance your own understanding of your audience, because at the end of the day, you know that you know what your audience responds to, you know why they subscribe to you, you know why you send content out to them. Um, but you can use AI to just enhance all of that. Like I said, you don't want to sit there manually and decide for each subscriber the best send time. So it's just using AI to enhance what you already know about your subscribers. And AI-driven design and copy suggestions. So I don't want to, because I am I am personally a very creative person. I, I like writing. I like design. I, I, I enjoy these things. I know not everyone does. So as a creative person, I think sometimes with AI, it's like, oh, I don't want to just use AI in that way to be my creative brain, but it, you don't necessarily have to. It doesn't have to be a copy and paste. I found that AI can be quite helpful in these things. So if you're just talking about design, um, content suggestions, like I said, in Mayorlite, we do have the, um, the writing assistant and the subject line assistant. So you can just get ideas and it doesn't have to be, oh, I have to use these now. It's just, oh, I like this one. I want to edit it. So as a creative person, I, I use AI all the time just to get ideas, to get a, a jump start on things. And then I kind of add my own um, insight to it. So if you're somebody who's maybe not wanting to use AI for that reason, because you feel like it might infringe on the creativity or it might sound robotic or just anything like that, just know that it really can work with you. It doesn't have to be a copy and paste. You can um, You can work with it and you can add your own voice to it. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about this just because it is going to be a big thing next year. Um, as we get more information, we'll do webinars on this. We'll post more content, but this is kind of just what we know so far. So Apple Mail will have, they might already, I, I think I need to kind of see what is going to be, because um, I think this will be a big thing for that will be more paid attention to next year, if that makes sense. So with Apple Mail's iOS updates, they're basically putting things into categories, promotion like tab, like they do in Gmail. Um, it's not a bad thing. I don't want to, someone to hear the word promotions tab and just think that their emails are going to get lost because a lot of people misunderstand the promotions tab in Gmail and they think if their email lands there, it's just gone. People don't see it. Um, and it really is just a sorting. It, it, it almost is better when, you know, the reader gets used to it um, because it just sorts things and it's not something that we control at MailerLite. So we don't put things in the promotions tab or control where it goes if it lands in primary. There are certain ways, um, you know, deliverability wise, authentication that can help it land in either place, but it's not a setting in MailerLite. Same with this. You can't really decide where the email will land in the, in the Apple Mail update primary tab. Um, but there are certain things you can do, like I said, deliverability wise, so that when Apple Mail reads your email, it can decide, oh, this is this is primary or this is promotions or whatever it is. Um, so because of this, mobile optimization is something that has always, I think, been important since we've been using our phones to read emails. But, you know, just again, as things get more competitive, it will definitely um, become more important just to make sure that you're, because in MailerLite, most likely you're creating things on desktop, you're creating emails on desktop, you might forget to just check out things on mobile. And then when you go and look on mobile, things can look a little bit out of place. Sometimes things can be too big. The nice thing is, is in MailerLite, everything is optimized automatically. So you shouldn't really have to change too much, but it is always good to just look at what things, um, what the design is like on mobile, because this is where people read their emails a lot of the time. And especially with the um, with the new segmentation, it'll be really important to make sure like subject lines, what is, you know, what is that looking like? The pre-headers, this part here, what does that all look like on mobile? Will all also be very important.
Okay, so when it comes to data, a trend that we're predicting for 2025 is just things are going to be a lot stricter with data. So again, in the past, we saw things, these kind of email marketing, um, I don't want to say trends, but things like purchase lists or th these not best practices, these things where we're not really collecting data ethically, maybe we're, you know, it's um like web scraping. None of this is allowed in Maryland. I'm just saying these are things that people have done in the past to kind of collect data, collect subscribers unethically, right? So without their permission. And I just wanted to touch on ethical data collection because it will be something that changes a lot in the next coming year. And it is something that happened because of the regulations of this year with authentication and unsubscribe rates, because if you are sending emails to an audience that hasn't subscribed to you, you will receive a lot of bounce rates, a lot of unsubscribe rates, spam rates. It will hurt your deliverability a lot. So in knowing that, this became a lot more important for ethical data, data collection. And MailerLite is not an, a cold email marketing tool. So if you are using MailerLite, you're probably not, you're not doing cold email marketing, um, as in you're not sending emails to people that you know didn't subscribe, at least you shouldn't be. Um, but it's just important that the subscribers that you are collecting, they opted in. Not only did, did they opt in, but it's even better if they shared their preferences. Um, in MailerLite, we have a preferences block. So you can actually add it to your emails and it will ask your subscribers, how often do you want to hear from me? What content do you want to receive? Um, what do you not want? Am I sending too much? You can, you can add all of that. So not only having them subscribe and opt in, but actually um, if they share their preferences, it's even better. So again, trust building, it's essential. All of this becomes a lot more important, just ethical data collection. We're kind of moving way past the point of you know, um, data scraping and purchasing email lists. I think it's just, it's proven to not be a good marketing strategy um, if, you're, if you're doing things you know, this way. Okay, one of the last things I'll talk about and then we'll get into the reflections. We're about halfway through this. We might just be under the hour this webinar, we'll see. Um, one of the things that we're also going to notice, again, just as things get more competitive, as things get more, um, as we need more ways to access our subscribers, our customers, we will see this omni-channel integration. What does that mean? Email, SMS, in-app notifications. Um, SMS is not something currently offered in MailerLite. Um, I'm just mentioning it as a trend that it is something that we do see. Um, and that is the, the text message notifications. So this might sound like a lot, as in it might sound like we're suggesting you bombard your subscribers with all of these notifications, and we're not. There, there's ways to do this with strategy. It's not just send them as many notifications as possible. It's the same um, idea with emails. You don't just want to send all these emails. You have to have a strategy behind it. Um, same with all of this, the SMS, notifications, any kind of other channel you're adding in, there's strategy behind it. It's not just about bombarding people with, you know, with offers. Um, United customer experience, un unified customer experience across all of these channels, whether it's your website, um, if you have a course, your marketing, just making sure it's all cohesive, consistent. Um, and leveraging data from multiple touch points. So again, ethical data collection and just making sure that you are using it to its fullest, whether it's using AI, to segment things or whether you're just bringing in um, purchasing data, all of that, it is just important to have a cohesive strategy behind that. And just checking the chat, making sure everything is okay. Okay, so I did mention this as well, the hyper-personalization and specifically conversational tones. So, as I mentioned, in this new world of influencers, of talking to our customers in a more authentic way, we're seeing the jump in personalization, we're seeing 
this kind of unfiltered, authentic storytelling, and also user-generated content. That's what this is, UGC, user-generated content. That can also apply in email marketing. Um, it's basically the idea that it your customers are more likely to rely on a positive review from somebody else than, say, someone that is marketing to them. So rather than a marketing strategy saying, this product is great, I'm selling it to you because I'm the brand owner, they're more likely to follow someone who saying who was saying, I use this product or I signed up to this and I had a great experience and it's my personal um, my personal review. So that is becoming a lot more important, popular, because I guess people are becoming more aware that, you know, these are, we are selling at the end of the day. And if someone has their authentic review, their authentic story from, you know, that's why we have these reviews, testimonials, um, that is what people are paying more attention to these days. Um, and of course, shorter content, interactive, gamified elements for shrieking attention spans. So what does this mean? Just making sure your emails, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have short emails, but that the content is um, targeted, that it, like I said, is formatted so that it's not overly complicated to read, that it's easy to see at a glance so that in the in those first three seconds, um, you know, they can decide if they want to read it or not based on that. Interactive and gamified, because again, attention spans are getting shorter. So we're not, we're not saying make your full email this, you know, big interactive thing. Um, it could be surveys, um, it could be polls, it could be just um, little simple things. It could be event invites that where you can just have things, you know, in the email, just Anything to make it more interactive, more engaging. Um, there's lots of things you can add. It just helps with making your content more engaging. And carrying on with that idea, creative approaches to content, um, using videos, things are getting a lot more visual these days. So of course, the writing side of things is still very important to have your writing formatted in your emails, but also adding things like videos um, adding things to make your content just more engaging in that way, just because videos are becoming more, um, more visual in that sense. Um, and speaking of visual, dark mode optimization for better user experience. I think every app I've mostly seen is going dark mode. Um, it really is just a design thing, and it's also an accessibility thing as well. So if you want to adapt this strategy, you can always look at what your emails look like in dark mode because sometimes things look great in your normal um, settings, but if you look at it in dark mode, it might look completely off. And that might not be really important to you, but if you are creating emails that are read on mobile and you know that you're gonna come across people who are reading things in dark mode, just kind of, just to see how it looks. Um, you can do this by sending yourself a test email. Always send yourself a test email just to see how things look in different inboxes, um, dark modes, all of this. It just helps to make sure things are more accessible. Okay. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in kind of our own personal reflections for this year. And we're just about halfway through. So this next segment, I'm going to be kind of asking these guided questions. And we're going to be reflecting on our own 2024 results, okay? So this is kind of your own time to reflect on your own performance of this year. So there's several things you can do. I'm gonna give some space. I'm gonna give about 10-ish minutes and I'm gonna guide us through this. Um, what I would suggest is if you do have a MailerLite account, you can open it so that you can actually see these things. So we're gonna look at what worked well this year? What worked well? Best campaigns, um, engagement metrics, doesn't have to be numbers as well. Um, maybe you adopted a new strategy that worked really well this year. Maybe you um, branched out of your comfort zone in some way, you tried something new and it paid off. Um, maybe you launched something new this year and it, and it went well, right? So it could be anything. What worked well this year? That's the first thing. What were the challenges? Um, what campaigns didn't perform that well? 
resource gaps. What did you come across where you realize, I don't know how to do this and I don't necessarily have the time to learn how to do it either, because that's also something that we come across a lot. You don't always have the time to learn, you know, a new thing. Um, so that could be something too. Is there, some, is there an area where you wish you had knowledge in something? If you don't, like, let's say you don't have the time. Let's say in a perfect world, if I had, you know, I, if I had a knowledge of automations and how to be, you know, how to make um, complex automations, for example, or anything, what would be something that you would want to have the knowledge of? Um, so that was where the challenge is. And what opportunities might have you missed? So that's something that you can look at because we're at the end of the year, right? And you can kind of look back and say, okay, what did I not utilize that I could have? Um, could I have used AI this year? Was there something that I missed that, you know, maybe next year I could look more into? Um, untapped audiences. Is there a certain strategy that I, you know, didn't think of or that I, you know, didn't implement this year that I wanted to? Anything like that. So... I'm going to give, uh, okay, we'll jump into that part next. Okay, so I'm going to give about five to 10 minutes, not too long because we are going to discuss these um, in the chat together. And you can, you can go ahead and um, add things in the chat. I see people discussing, which is great. That's kind of what I wanted to encourage. Um, but I recommend taking a second, um, whether you want to write it out or bring up a note, um, notes app, do it digitally, and you can just write one thing or multiple for each one. What worked well? What were the challenges? What opportunities did you miss? I see someone ask about me showing anything in Miller Light. Um, this is your own reflections. So I said, if you have your own account, you can open it so that you can see these things. You can see what your best campaigns were or your underperforming ones. Um, if you don't, that's okay. It's just more of a reflection. So it doesn't have to be in numbers. Um, it can just be, you know, your own reflections of what, what, what worked well email marketing wise this year. Um, so no, I don't have anything to show in Mela Light. It's it's your own um, your own reflections, analytics, all of that. see some people writing in the chat to help us reflect. I have some additional kind of things to consider. These aren't additional questions. This is just to help you with these. When we think about successes, which campaigns drove the most engagement or revenue could be something that you think of. 
So it could be highest open rates. Um, if you do have the kind of campaigns where people reply, it could be something like that. Um, if it was something that they were signing up to, um, was there a certain campaign where you had a lot of signups, things like that? Revenue, of course, that does rely a lot on if you are um, doing e-commerce, but this is also very email marketing related. So I'm not necessarily talking about your biggest uh, revenue sale. It's more, did you have a campaign that drove a lot of revenue or did you make sales through a specific campaign? Something like that. Did you discover something new? Um, that could even be a success as well. I don't think a success has to be something that like worked or that drove revenue. It could just be, did you discover a new strategy? Did you discover a new integration and it, it was, and it worked for you? That's a success. I see someone said I've been using AI for the, what worked well is using AI for my text and subject line. It's good, it's always good to try, even you know if you don't um, find it's useful, but a lot of times it, it really is. I do see people mentioning automation as a challenge, which makes sense. Automation is something that can be very simple or very complex, so, it's understandable that it's challenging because there's so much you can do with it. So we do have a lot of resources on automation. We also have automation templates as well. So if you don't want to build the automation yourself, you're just starting. Um, we do have automation templates in Mailer Lane as well. And speaking of that, we can go into challenges. I am reading the chat as well. This is kind of our opportunity to reflect together um, when we think about challenges. So the easiest way to see a challenge is in numbers in certain ways. So low open rates, um, was there an unsubscribe? Did you have a, a campaign that led to a lot of unsubscribes for some reason? Um, were you emailing an old list and maybe had a lot of bounces, something like that? That could be an easy like, oh, that didn't go well. Um, so yeah, better need for targeting or content quality. Like I said, a challenge could just be, I tried something new, it, it didn't work, that's okay. It's, you know, that's what life is. Um, a challenge can be, I, I really wanted to learn this and I haven't had the opportunity to, haven't had the time or resources to learn it. So it's a challenge, you know, like automation. Um, I think too, a challenge can also be just maybe not knowing what to do, you know, not really understanding um, these new trends or how to stand out in this competitive marketing world or how to compete with shorter attention spans. I think all of that is quite challenging for any creator. So just even not under, not knowing, not having, I don't have a strategy that, that could be a challenge. I don't know what I need to do. That's okay too. And opportunities. So like I said, what did you maybe miss that we can implement next year? Okay, and we are kind of nearing the the tail end of this segment, this section. Um, so I will just ask if you do have, if you would like to share, we'll just go ahead and use the chat for this and I might, you know, pick out some things or discuss. Um, but I would encourage you to share one thing some people already have. Um, just so everyone can kind of 
understand. I think a lot of us are probably in the same boat. So one, what was once, you don't have to name all three. Um, you can pick one. You can either share a success. Let us all celebrate with you. Share a challenge. Someone else might have the same challenge. Or share an opportunity, something you want to learn next year in email marketing or just technology. Yeah, someone mentioned not fully understanding trends, still learning from our own data. Yeah, it's it's okay. Like I mentioned, it's it's I think that's it's okay to say, you know, things are changing quickly and it's hard to keep up. Um, I think we all have that challenge. It's why AI could be helpful. AI is quicker than than we are. So um AI definitely helps with keeping up with these things. But yes. Someone said, I want to make more use out of things like A-B testing. This is a good step. I think A-B testing is a good kind of next step to try if you haven't yet. Um, if you're looking for something new to try next year or just something that you want to adopt, because A-B testing is not very risky, in my opinion. Um, it just gives you an opportunity to just see what works. There's not a lot of, um, like I said, risk or loss in it. Um, so it's just an opportunity to see what could be improved. And it's nice because it's your own audience that tells you. So it's not, you know, a blog article that tells you what how you should change your content or AI saying, I think you should do this. It's your own audience saying, I didn't open this, but I, I open this, you know, it's more interesting. And we do have guides on all of this as well. So videos, knowledge-based articles. underperforming automation. Someone said, it just means to revisit the strategy, honestly, just to look at the automation again, if it's underperforming. Automation, like, like I said, it can be very complex and there's so many aspects to it. So for example, if you look at the automation activity, right, and you see um, who didn't even make it through the automation, who like, um, who got it's like, canceled or failed, like who basically reached a step and then didn't continue. And it could be for several reasons that happened, but a lot of people don't know to look at these things. And all of this is, is automation activity. Um, and it helps you kind of see where the pain points in your automation are. If people are kind of stopping in one area and they're just getting kicked out of the automation, okay, why, what's going on with that step? Do I need to change it? Um, if someone, if people are unsubscribing at a certain point, okay, why did I have targeting wrong or did the delay was my delay not set up right did they receive an email at the wrong time um so i'd say yeah underperforming automate underperforming automation um just just go back in and, and look at it like really closely and just see what where the problems are I'm going to look at some of these questions and then we'll go ahead and just wrap this up. Um, a few more things to say and then that, that'll be it. But I love people are adding in um, the reflections in the chat. Looking at some of these questions here. Someone said, how often do you recommend cleaning your list? Unsubscribe rates, people who don't open emails. It kind of depends. If you have an old list, I would say clean it right away. Um, as in like, if you have a list that you haven't cleaned in a while, um, it's good to do. If it's something that you just kind of went through, you can look at, I mean, I'm not necessarily going to claim to be an expert in um, in this, but in MailerLite, if you go into the subscribers area, 
there is a cleanup tool that everyone has access to. And that will show you there's different filters, um, who didn't open my campaigns in the last six months, who didn't click on anything in the last year, um, things like that, who wasn't engaged at all um, the last you know six months in my content. Um, and that'll help you understand kind of, it's not something you want to do too often. I would say minimum like every six months because you want to give people an opportunity to open things, to be engaged, right? So you don't want to just say, oh, it's been a month. They haven't opened anything. Um, they're getting kicked off, right? So I would say at least six months to gather that data if, if it's new. Um, but also just check that cleanup tool in MailerLite because it'll help you see um, unengaged subscribers over the last like six months, the last year, and then that'll help you kind of understand where you want to clean. Uh, someone said they switched from classic to new MailerLite and they enjoyed it. It's great, which is great to hear. Um, opens and clicks do not migrate. Yes, that is that is the case with migration. Um, a lot of so what, like the campaign history, um, your opens and clicks that will stay in classic. Um, you don't lose that data. It doesn't go anywhere, but it will not necessarily migrate. But migration is a, is a whole other thing. Again, we're talking about an older version of MailerLite to a newer version. Um, how often do you recommend sending a newsletter? That is, that very much depends on your own your own um, brand, your own strategy. But we do have guides on this as well. Apologize giving an answer like that. If I'm not a, um, an, like knowing an expert in it, but we have articles and guides, I will always say that. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and move kind of just to the end of this. I really appreciate everyone for joining me today. Um, I wanted to kind of just give a shout out to our end of the year sale. If you haven't seen it or taken advantage of it already, um, you can save 33% off annual plans as the year ends. So you don't have to necessarily do anything if you want to take advantage of this. If you, So this is if you don't obviously have an annual plan, this is if you want to upgrade to an annual plan, you can see this discount. All you would need to do is upgrade to an annual growing advanced growing or advanced plan before December 17th. Um, and it'll be automatically applied at checkout. It's basically four months free of an advanced, of a annual plan. So it's a really good deal. Um, if you've enjoyed using MailerLite and you know you're gonna use it next year, you know that it's a part of your marketing strategy, you know that it's gonna grow, um, then I recommend it. I always buy things on Black Friday because it's just a good time of, good time of the year. Um, someone asked, what is the cost for the year regularly? It depends because it's based on your subscriber amount. Um, I think I can just drop very quickly. I can drop in our um, pricing just so you can see maybe um maybe Claudia can Claudia can do that as well. Um, it depends the um on your subscriber amount. Someone asked, "Is it possible to download?" Uh, oh no. Okay, I don't think we'll be able to get to all of these questions. Some of these are a little bit more specific to um, your account or things we didn't talk about in the webinar. And if we didn't get a chance to talk about, um, to answer everyone's questions, I recommend to have a look at all of our resources. And right at the end of this, by the way, recommend to look at all of our resources. We have a huge database of um, knowledge, art knowledge base articles, video tutorials, blogs, we have a MailerLite Academy. Um, we have so many things to help with resources. Again, I am not an expert who can answer all individual like these questions. So I'm, I'm recommending to 
Um, just have a look at all of these resources, honestly, that are out there. And we do host these webinars. So I will also just um, put our webinar page here as well so that if you want to sign up to a next live learning session or know when our next webinars are, you can. And okay, I just put in the chat our webinar page. And yes, this webinar has been recorded, so you will receive a recording after this. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to just have some initial reflections. This wasn't meant to be, um, you know, this in-depth analysis of your account. Just, you know, get get the ideas rolling. So I hope that that um, helped. Um, Thank you again, everyone. Enjoy your holidays. Enjoy your holiday breaks if you get one. Um, we will resume webinars again in January, and I look forward to seeing everyone then. Okay. Thank you, everyone.